death metal. Yeah, and the you death, death metal song for so sure. Yeah. I might have one later on. Maybe about twelve thirty, I'll play that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, tell us something about your music and and what's what we can expect. Well, I'm really excited to anytime I get a chance to play with Bob. Bob's a, an amazing player and a, a pretty decent human being. Uh, for those of you who know him, you know that's true. But he plays uh, all the woodwind instruments, and he plays all the, all of them very, very well. And we get to do, uh, we, we'll play a lot of Brazilian music, and we'll do a lot of straight-ahead uh, swing tunes. I, I try to stay away from the J word, the jazz word, <laughs> you know, even though that's my love. I love that, but I, I, uh, people hear jazz, and, and it's such a big umbrella, they kind of go, yeah, I don't like jazz. <laughs> And there's some jazz I don't really care for either, but... Uh, well, it's just sort of, you know, people say they don't like country rock, but there's so many genres of country yeah, or yeah, rock. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can go yeah. It's you know, a, Nashville country or, or whatever. So. Exactly. There's a lot of diversity out there, and, and, you, and, and it's all subjective. And forgive me, because I was introducing you earlier as Brazilian jazz, so... Oh, no, that's but, quite all right. I'll, 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 I'll own that. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Well, play us something. Yeah, you don't well, want to hear me talk. Well, I'll do a Brazilian jazz tune. This Very is good. Uh, this is a song written by Eduardo Lobo. Uh, it's called Tristesia. Uh, Tristesia is one of those Brazilian words that doesn't really have a, a real good interpretation. It's uh, it's the happy sadness. Melancholy might be the closest thing, but uh, it's they use that word to describe how they feel when they lose love, but they recognize that they can't feel that way unless they had love. That's that kind of thing. It's deep. <laughs> the brutes feel Let it fly on a red wing Would my heart sing again From this day on my days are days of sun and roses My nights are carnival of song From this day on dear the door to sorrow closes This day when you came I mean, big name national touring acts. Do you have any good stories you can tell us? Um, well, actually, I, I've played not with those people, but for uh, opening acts. Opening most up. of them. Yeah, some of them I've played with, like Curtis Steigers. 
Um, when I when I opened for Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones, this was quite a long time ago. For the first time at, at Boulder Theater, I, I got to do it a couple of times. But uh, I got a call, and they were they'd been on the scene for maybe a year, year and a half, and it kind of hit it. And uh, during the and great guys, Victor Wooten, bass player, is just such a fantastic human being and a great player. But I was doing the sound check, and I started playing a Brazilian tune. Uh, by a great composer named Devon Lins, Madalena. And Howard Levy, who played harmonica and keyboards with him, hasn't been with the band for a long time, he came out and he goes, are you going to play that tonight? I said, well, yeah, probably. He goes, hey, can I come out and play that with you? I went, uh, yeah. <laughs> so can you say no to that? That was a thrill. Uh, but being in the in situations where I can play, uh, open up for some of these people, be, be, to play for their audiences is, is really a thrill. Um, and some of them are very aloof, and some of them are uh, go out of their way to make you feel comfortable. Uh, George Benson was one of those guys who, uh, after his sound check, and, we, and then we got a chance to do ours, and we were walking back towards the green room, and my friend that was playing drums with me at the time had a CD that he wanted to see if he could get George to sign, and, and he started to walk over towards him, and the, the security just kind of waved him off and said, uh, no, it's not cool. But then I walked around the corner, I had my guitar on my back, and he made a point of coming over and shaking my hand and saying hello. How cool. Yeah, that, that kind of camaraderie of guitarists. <laughs> well, George Benson, is he still alive? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, I just haven't heard anything from him. He yeah. quite a, you know, the 80s and the 90s, quite an angle. Oh, he's, so. man, I, starting out when he was a kid, playing with Jack McDuff and all these really straight ahead good players. I mean, I remember listening to my first George Benson album when I was in Casper College, <laughs> and it was uh, real straight ahead jazz, uh, really cooking stuff, uh, not the more commercial bent that he when he started singing and doing that. It was just guitar playing. But he's uh, he lives in Hawaii. We haven't talked for a long time. <laughs> he he never he doesn't even send me a Christmas card anymore. I don't know, man. This is this is a drag. But he's, I know he's still playing and uh, out there doing his stuff. Well, yeah. He was quite the guy. Oh, like great, him. great player. Yeah. Influenced a lot of wonderful guitar players. Inspired a lot of wonderful guitar players. But, and thus you. So. You know, this, this, this thing they call guitar is, uh, is such a puzzle, and it, it'll keep you entertained for all of your life if, if you, uh, you know, pick it up every day and... That is a beautiful guitar you have. What is that a custom-made one? For this you? this one is. It's made by uh, John Buscarino. He's a, a luthier out of uh, North Carolina now. When I bought this from him, he was in Florida. Um, but it's his. He is more known for his archtop guitar, steel string. But he started making this nylon string. I got into nylon strings probably 25 years ago, 30 years ago, and I had an, I had a couple of real nice. Steel string, a 335, Gibson 335, that was my main axe. When I started playing nylon, it was like, this is the sound for me, I just love it. And then I, I was looking for a guitar that I could make my own, and I, and I read about John, and he calls this the Grand Cabaret. Uh, it had to, has an arched back like an arched top would, would have an arched front, but the back is arched, and it just helps in the sound projection. I was wondering if it affected the tone or yeah. what with that arched back. Yeah, it just projects mm -hmm. with the way he uses is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Workmanship. This is western cedar and the and the, the back and sides. I like the ports on the top side. Yeah. I don't see those very often. Yeah, it's really nice to have that as a, a little monitor mm -hmm. because it, it creates the it, le it lets you hear the guitar a little more than you would if it wasn't there. So it's fun. Please play some more. Yeah, you bet. Well, I'll do a um I haven't even drawn up set list to send to Bob for this Wednesday, but um, I'm, I'm hoping we'll do some of, we'll do, we certainly will do some of my tunes. I'll do, uh, this, this song is called Little by Little Again and Again. It's my latest song that I came up with. Uh, um, my philosophy teacher uh, was explaining how we, who's very pragmatic sort of teachings, he said, you know, Anything that you do that's worthwhile, you do it little by little, again and again. And so I thought, that will make a good tune. 
Thanks. So that's what this is called. It's the, uh, yeah, the uh, state of the world these days. Um, we are always searching for ways to make some difference, and that can be overwhelming, but if we just do it little by little, again and again, we'll get there. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> you know, my mantra in my show is be kind, be grateful, make someone smile today. That's a and beautiful practice mantra. random acts of kindness. It sure makes a difference in this world, and it sure makes this life a better place to live. A lot of kind people here. There are a lot of kind people here. And good music. We're a music hub of Central Colorado. It's amazing, all the great players that are around here. And hopefully I'll be able to get out and see some this summer. I hope so, too. It's been a good two years since I've seen you play. And Wednesday, yeah. guys, May the 4th, down in Coldale. You don't want to miss it. Great listening room at the schoolhouse. Thanks for Bruce Warren for supporting that Coldale schoolhouse. And then next month, he's playing the 28th at Vino Salida. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Bruce Warren, for uh, getting the word out and for bringing in a lot of great music. The Coldale Schoolhouse is a great little uh, venue. It's, we're so lucky to just have that down the road, so look forward to it. And just a short drive from Howard, even better, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Please play more. Yeah. I'll do... Uh, you know, I've been, I found myself uh, playing more blues and ballads this last year. Uh, of course, I'm playing a lot of them to myself. I don't do a lot of these tunes out very often, especially the ballads. Um, but I, I love this blues uh, by Mose Allison uh, because it, uh, it's timely, even though he wrote it probably 30 years ago. <laughs> good good tunes, just, uh, you know, they, they keep their value. But this one, particularly, the lyric speaks to me. It's called, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Everybody's Crying Mercy? Yeah! How did you know? My wife covers that. Oh, really? Yeah. Who's your wife? Um, her name is Rhonda. We're, we're here for you, though. Oh, so you no, can... no, but I'm, I was curious. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great tune. I'm, I'm so glad you knew the title of it, because I didn't know what I was going to play. <laughs> here, I love the tune. Yeah. I can't 
can't believe the things I'm seeing And I wonder about some things that I have heard Everybody's crying mercy When they don't know the meaning of the word A bad enough situation Is sure enough getting worse Everybody's crying Justice, just as long as there's business firms. Total touch and go, give a cheer, buy your souvenir. People running round in circles. Where they're headed for Everybody's crying Peace on earth Just as soon As we win This war Don't have to go off Broadway See something that is plain absurd Everybody's crying mercy, 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 mercy When they, they don't know the meaning of the word They don't know the meaning of the world. Mercy, mercy. Mercy, <laughs> love mercy. Thank you. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. That's really nice. Mose wrote some great tunes. He did. Yeah. During the pandemic, how did you cope with the isolation and the shutdown? Did you write more songs, or uh, did you just re re retreat into the wilderness, or both? Both, or? yeah. I, I, you know, I don't really consider myself a songwriter, because songwriters write every day, you know, and I don't. And if I, sometimes things will come through me, and I'll fool around with it, and if, it, if I'm smart enough to write it down, I get to keep it. I um, still think that makes you a songwriter. <laughs> well, I'm not a prolific songwriter. Okay. But I tell you, I, uh, uh, the, the first, this is the first time during the pandemic that I was home for that long. And, uh, man, it's hard to go out back out in the world after that. I mean, it really nurtured my true introversion, in, introverted self. Introversion? That's what happens when you turn your socks inside out, right? Um, so it, it, it was interesting. Um, I got to spend more time with my wife and my dogs. And, my and they still like you. And, well, you know, I, I think. I know, <laughs> I know that. The dogs are fine. <laughs> I'm sure every once in a while uh, Jamie would like me to maybe go get a job, uh, which, which we will, will be doing. But it's, it, uh, it was a great time to practice, work on tunes, um, and just play songs that I just wanted to play, which is pretty much what I do. I, you know, I, you start out in this business and you and you try to appeal to people, and sometimes that means playing, you know, things that you may or may not want to play. Um, and I, I've I've tried to play what s speaks to me because if I don't, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deliver anything that's 
real or true. And people pick up on that, I think, more than they do if, you know, if, if you're playing recognizable tunes, which I do some. <laughs> I just put a little twist on them, you know. And with your <clears throat> style of music, you really don't get much requests either, do you? Or do you? Well, you know, where, when I, I'm playing uh, in different restaurants, bars, sure, people request stuff. Uh, um, and sometimes they'll request things that's kind of along the lines that you're doing, and sometimes it'll just come out of the blue and of something that I would never do. <laughs> <laughs> I won't request Freebird, I promise. So. Oh, that's just, I was going to do that next. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say that on the radio? I, th I think so. I think I've so. It's not one of the seven words. I don't think so. so. No, yeah, yeah, you can say that. Okay. Yeah. Well, crap. So, anyway. <laughs> Please play more. Man, I'm, I'm fascinated to watch your finger style and how nimble oh. you are. You're quite the consummate oh. uh, guitarist. Oh, well, thank you. It, it's, like I say, it's a work in progress, and it always will be. And when it stops being a work in progress, I guess I'll be done. Then, then I'll have, this will be for sale. So if you've been playing for 12, you've been playing for, you know, for 40 years, so... Uh, actually, I've been playing... I'm a little older <laughs> than that. I'm, <clears throat> I've been playing for... <clears throat> yeah. 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 Yeah, I just got my Medicare card in the last week, so... Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've had mine for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll do an old standard, uh, since it's at the end of April. I'll, this is a song called I Remember April. I'll Remember April. Nice. Uh, and I would tell you who wrote it if I knew. Um, maybe Vernon Duke. I could be making that up. I, I, I make a lot of stuff up, so you gotta watch that. Works. Okay. Swing time songs, you know, from the 30s, 40s. I love those tunes. You're gonna have the Coldale Schoolhouse dancing. Well, I hope so. You know that that's the thing about it. We're going back to jazz and oh, jazz. I'm like jazz and in, in, in its time was the popular songs. I mean, that's you know they took those musicians took all those popular songs and just swung the hell out of them, and people danced and had fun and listened. And I like that's you know I like that that groove that feel. I do too, man. Interesting, man. I love this music. And then Bob blowing over the top of that is a, a, t something to behold. I tell you. Is he bringing a saxophone with him? He's bringing. Yeah, he'll bring. Uh, he'll play probably uh, alto. I don't think he's bringing his tenor, uh, but he'll probably bring bring a couple of flutes and, and his alto. And and uh, I've been trying to get him to break out his bass clarinet, but. <laughs> oh, I'd like to hear that. He did. We did. Uh, actually, we did one concert. I think at um, we used to have them at our place. Uh, at our, we have a little retreat center in Howard, and the first house concerts we had were there. And I think he brought his baritone for one of those because I had him play it on a couple of tunes. So that was fun. That's how I got into music. Was was sixth grade and, and starting out with alto sax and oh, graduating to baritone in jazz band. But, but the kindest yeah. thing I could do to the saxophone was to give it up and let the professionals play. Ah. I, I, had to <laughs> I had to struggle to, to stay, you know, 
in, in concert band and in stage band. It took a lot of practice. It didn't come natural to me. So that's why I respect musicians that can play so well. Because <laughs> it, it, it's not easy. And, it, and you make it look easy. Well, it's a it's a labor of love. I mean, I'm I'm I I give gratitude every day that this is what I get to do. I mean, how lucky is that? Uh, and I know a lot of a lot of musicians. Not they're not in my life anymore. But I I've known guys that it, it's just a job. You know, I I mean I've, I remember one friend of mine going, this guitar it's, it's just a screwdriver to me. It's a tool. I use it to go make some money. It's like. Really? You lost the passion. I, yeah. And you're not having fun. And that's all I mean, about the music was when you're having fun. Yeah. The magic happens. And if you're not, exactly. And if you're not having fun, nobody else is. <laughs> no, it's just a job. <laughs> and it's just a job. Yeah. And, and every night that I play, there's, there's a time, whether it's 10, 15 minutes or two hours or three hours, where it's nirvana. It's heaven. You're in that space and you're kind of outside yourself looking, watching, going... Wow, I've never done that before. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> you can never say that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it'll never be the same again. You know, it's the spontaneity of, of music is it's a wonderful thing. But and please play more. Music. Absolutely, I'll uh, I'll do a I'll do a cover tune. Uh, the Beatles. You know, everybody loves the Beatles. Um, I can't believe they wrote this song when they were in their early twenties, twenty, twenty one. I think McCartney and Lennon were, and uh, the lyric of this song just deserve to be slowed down a little bit and, and uh, so I like to take tunes and rearrange them and sometimes people like that and sometimes they go why did you do why would you do that to that song and I and I understand that it's too. interpretation it's my interpretation <laughs> I remember all my life The some have changed some forever not for better some have gone and some remain These memories have the moments With lovers and friends that came before Some are dead and some are living And I love, I love them all Friends and lovers, there is no one compares to you. These memories lose their meaning when I think of love as something new. I know I'll never be forgotten. Lovers and friends that came before I'll often stop and think about them In my life I love you more Sometimes the fingers work, sometimes they don't, you know? They <laughs> work in the first part of you. Well, what my a, favorite Beatles song. What boy, a tune, man. The, the song, it's like, boy, that brought tears to my eyes. Darn it, Justin, <laughs> doing that to me. Yeah, like I say, to, to write something like that when you're 20 and 21, those so old souls. Yeah, the Lennon McCartney, boy, it's like, wow, what, 
what songwriters and yeah. the amount of music they put out in oh. in less than ten years. Yeah, we're taking together just six it's, or seven years, right? Yeah, it's, it was pretty amazing. Wow. And when people ask that question, Beatles or Rolling Stones? It's like apples and oranges. You can't, you yeah. know, it's both, both. Yeah. That's usually I go Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Oh, forget about them. Yeah, and in high school, they're always, you know, who is better, Beatles or the Stones? It's like apples and oranges. Yeah, yeah. they're different. Yeah, the Stones were kind of rebellious, you know, kind of, which I enjoyed back then. Yeah, oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this, it's the greatest blues band in the world. That's it. And the Beatles wrote all those tunes. That's It's just fun. But that's what it is. Um, I thought, oh, I, I was going to go back to the swing thing. I, uh, I, you played a couple of tunes off uh, our CD, uh, and uh, I love the, the two that you played. I, I don't know if you played any others, but I played uh, the, I'll, I'll play the title track. I know you did No More Blues and uh, Make This City Ours. That's um, what it was. I didn't have to look up on my set list. I can't yeah. remember what they were. Yeah. It's funny, because I, as I was coming into town, I tuned in, and it's like, and I'm going, oh, wow, he's playing some Brazilian stuff. It's, Oh, that's me. <laughs> it took is that me, weird? It took me, yeah, 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 it really is. It took me a minute. Uh, uh, I, I, that happened to me driving up to Wyoming one time. There was a, there was a great little uh, community station out of Riverton, and I, I grew up in Dubois, and I'm driving up there, and, I, and they had this station, and I finally in, in range, and I turned it on, and they were playing one of my tunes. And I, and I'm, and I went, well, that's really familiar. What? Oh, that's me. It, and it's only happened a couple of times, so thank you for that experience. I appreciate it. Glad I could. <laughs> but this is the the title track to that CD that Bob and I did, and we'll probably play this on Wednesday because it's a song I wrote specifically for Frank Sinatra to sing. So if anybody knows how to get a hold of him, if, you know I'd really love to get it to him. It's called "Take Me Where the Moon Lives." It's one of those. Uh, it's reminiscent of those great. 30s and 40s and 50s writers that wrote those kind of tunes. Take me where the moon lives Just this side of heaven On a magic carpet That we will weave from love I'm sailing through the starlight When I'm gazing in your eyes the tenderness evoke from a thousand sad goodbyes. Life is just a journey, put on your traveling shoes and wander through the avenues with me. Take me where the moon lives with your gentle touch. And that simple that can mean so much Shower me with stardust Tell me that you care May I introduce this love I long to share Cause loving is the answer To all of life's mystery Take me where the moon lives Down and hold me please Fly Heart with me We will be In this deep blue Side of love Our lives Will be Endlessly Entwined In our hearts In our minds We can rise Above This side of heaven on a magic carpet that we will leave from love. I'm sailing through the starlight when I'm gazing in your eyes. The tenderness evoked from a thousand said goodbyes. Loving is the answer to all of life's mystery. Take me with the moon. Take me where the moon lives, darling, hold me, please. Take me where the moon lives. Nice. I like 
like that a lot. Ah, uh, thank you. I yeah, appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> my my voice, my throat is <clears throat> still infected with uh, tree pollen. <laughs> I think that's what the doctor told me yesterday. So I was like, really? It's like, all right. <clears throat> hey, can you tell us about how you got to California? And I was reading your bio earlier and stuff, and you end up meeting the founding member of the new Christian Minstrels. And how yeah. exciting at that young <laughs> age it was, to play with them. It was fun. Uh, well, growing up in Wyoming, uh, I went to school, and then uh, I, uh, a couple of years in college, and it, interesting, my while I'm my final year of, of college at the University of Wyoming, I go to my uh, I was majoring in journalism at the time. Well, I don't know why, but it seems like a good idea. I think it was the fourth time I changed my major, and I went to my advisor and I said, "Hey, I got to be gone for finals week. I'm playing. I was playing with a band up in South Dakota, <laughs> and uh, we had all these gigs lined up. And I said, "Can I make up your? Can I take your test before I go, or make it up when I come back?" And he said, "You know." You're always running off playing music. You don't apply yourself in school. You just do enough to get by. Why don't you just go play music? I said, that's, that's the best advice you've given me. Will you will call my folks and tell them? <laughs> Not that they mattered, you know, mm -hmm. enough that it mattered to them. So I uh, was playing in Jackson. I got a, a summer gig up in Jackson Hall. And uh, they had I was playing the early shift, and they had all these great bands from California come through. And, one of them, um, a trio, uh, Alan, Linda Poole, and a bass player, and uh, they're really good musicians, and I got to know them, and Linda said, you know, our, I, I got to know Linda really well. Al was kind of standoffish, and uh, Linda said, yeah, I'm, Michael, our bass player is leaving, and, uh, you know, you would, you know, so we're looking for a bass player, and I go, well, I play bass, that was, my, I played bass for years and years in bands, you know. And she said, well, would you be interested? Because you sing, too. That would be great. And I said, yeah. I'd look, no, I'm, are you kidding? And I'm 23 years old. It's just to say I was naive would be kind. Um, so I said, yeah. And he goes, well, she goes, well, let's, I'll, let me talk to Al, and, and we'll you know, set something up. And so she calls me and says, let's uh, bring your bass down, and, and we'll do a little rehearsal, you know, see how it works. So I go down, and, and Al's probably spoken two or three words to me. And uh, so he's like, let's play this song, Shorty Falls in Love. Here's, here's the change as it goes to this and to this and to this. And, and so let's do that. One, two, one, two, three. And he starts to do. And I'm playing, and then he just stops. And I'm like, that's it? That's, that's, that's all you're going to, you're not going to give me a chance to play it? And he goes, and I'm like, I'm really upset. And he goes, that's good. You, you know, gigs yours if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> You're hired. And I, I was like, oh, yeah, uh, sure, yeah, okay, great. And so off I went to California with them. And, and Al Poole turned out to be probably my, we were musical partners for about 10 years after his wife Linda left him. <laughs> um, incredible guy and uh, a mentor in life that at, at that age, going out to California, if he hadn't been my mentor, I probably uh, would have gotten shot or something. I don't know. How influential, too, <laughs> with that young age. Yeah, it was it was fun. Uh, and then I was playing around the uh, you know the Bay Area, and we, Al and I played with several. We put together several different bands and got to know a lot of different players. It was a musical mecca of Santa Cruz and Los Gatos. Uh, and first time I'd ever seen the ocean. Back was in the seventies, man, yeah. the magical time. Yeah. And through that, did you meet some South African musicians and got acquainted with them? Well, you know, actually, I met I, I uh, met a guitar player who was um, getting ready to do a, a, a Scandinavian tour with Randy Sparks and Christy Minstrels, and he knew that I played bass and guitar and sang, and he goes, do you have any interest in, in doing this? And I said, yeah, sure. And so we got together, and we played, you know, with Randy and stuff, and, and Randy said, yeah, let's do this. So we went to Scandinavia for three months. And a lot of that time was in Oslo, and we were playing for this gentleman who owned everything from almost from the smallest pubs to the biggest showroom dance rooms. And he housed all these musicians in one big apartment building. And so, talk about a party. Um, and that's where these two South African people were playing, and I got to know them. Tremendous players, uh, Tony Cox and Steve Newman, they're still out there doing it. Um, 
and we got to be good friends. And they said, have you ever considered, you know, would you, you want to come to South Africa? And I said, ah, uh, gee, I, I don't know. I mean, there was a, you know, uh, that was during apartheid. That was 84, 83. And uh, there was a boycott. And I went, you know, I, I'd love to, but that, I don't know if I can. And, and so they said, we'll set you up with a guy, an agent, and you'll only play integrated venues, you know. And I went, well, that sounds interesting. So we talked and did that thing. And so I ended up going to South Africa for a year, which was uh, an eye-opener, to say the least. Uh, first time I got tear gassed and shot out with rubber bullets. and Because uh, I was going into the townships to play music with the black musicians who were, there were some amazing players. And uh, that was illegal. That upset quite a few white people. Didn't yes, it? yeah. Um, so I was eventually repatriated, and I managed to get out of the country um, about two weeks before that order came down because they said I owed a whole bunch of money in taxes. <laughs> Which, wow. I, you know, I mean, it was interesting. As soon as I, I was on the, uh, as soon as I presented myself on that scene, uh, and that scene being uh, when there was there was starting to be riots in '84, and. I was playing at this one hotel in Durban, and all the all the press were staying in that hotel, and the the journalists never came down to the bar, but all the photographers that that was the big hang. It's amazing how many photographers play guitar. So we'd pass the guitar around at the end of the night and and have a few drinks, and I'd go into the townships with the photographers, and that's when I'd get shot at and got rubber bullet. And, and since they when they identified me. I, I never got a piece of mail that wasn't open, uh, and wow. and every once in a while they'd just come into my room and throw stuff around just to, to let me know that they could do that whenever they wanted to. Wow. That's, that's an interesting time. Some things change, some things remain the same, don't they? Yeah. So, yes, indeed. Yeah. yeah. Ruggy stones we're making, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 hopefully, it's uh, two steps forward and one step back, and not the two steps back that we've been <laughs> experiencing. I hope so. <laughs> Hey, we got out of the pandemic now, so... We're, we're wow. moving in the right direction. I looked up the COVID case for Chafee County. Zero cases in the past two weeks. Oh, great. Yes. Great, great, great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. That reminds me of that time in Scandinavia. I wrote this song. I met a, a great guitar player named Lucky Petty, and uh, he kept coming into a uh, place where we are playing, and, and uh, we'd, we'd hang out and play stuff in different situations and he was always grumbling about moving to Brazil and finding a new life you know I gotta get a new life <laughs> what what am I going to find new life <laughs> and so I went new life That's, and then I uh, after I came back from Scandinavia and South Africa I was in a parking lot in San Jose going where am I gonna find a new life <laughs> so this song came out of that eventually it's called new life <laughs> imagine that Time's worth the giving When you learn to love yourself You will create new life Simplicity in life is a key Used to defeat adversity We all must learn to live within the means Of Mother Earth's tranquility New life We have so much to learn New life About each other and ourselves New life the world is our concern. Take my hand and walk the road and we'll create new life. Come with me, find new life. I'm not for we can live and learn together. Life where time's worth the giving. And when you learn to love yourself, you will create new life. Simplicity in life is a key used to defeat adversity. We all must learn to live within the means of Mother Earth's tranquility. New life, we have so much to learn. New life, 
About each other and ourselves New life, the world is our concern So take my hand and walk the road And we'll create new life must have some of that allergy going on too. <laughs> I love that little bridge. That's kind of fun, a little, yeah, little yeah. Uh, reggae calypso sort of thing. Yeah. I don't play those songs enough. I don't play these songs often enough. I, I should do them more often. When you finally moved back to Colorado, I guess you relocated to Denver. Man, did you get involved to the... Denver's always had a vibrant jazz well, scene. I, I moved to Denver in '86, yeah, and it was it was probably the best jazz scene I've experienced in a in a city. Uh, I was amazed. I got to meet and hang with a bunch of really great players. I can only imagine, yeah. man. Yeah, I made some lifelong friends there. One of my best friends, Chuck Lamb, is a piano player. Yeah, yeah. He plays with uh, the Brubeck Brothers. Wow. Uh, I met Chuck and and we played together for a long time. We were Still best friends. Uh, um, it was interesting, too. I, I'd heard of Chuck. He had a band. And I was playing with a great sax player named Mark Miller, who was also one of my dear friends. And Mark had a migraine. And we were supposed to play at the Boulderado Hotel. And uh, Mark couldn't make it. And Chuck had played the early shift there. And I walk in, and, and I'm getting getting my stuff out. And Chuck's sitting by the, yeah. on the piano. And... and uh, he said, hey, uh, I'm Chuck Lamb. Mark just called me, and he, he can't make it, you know. Uh, if, if you want, I'll play with you, or, you know, you can just solo, whatever you want. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God, Chuck Lamb? Uh, a little pressure there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, you know, and we, that was the first time we played together, and uh, it was magic. It just flowed, didn't it? It, it flowed, and it was so much fun. So uh, that, that was one of my That's cool. highlights, yeah. But great, great Denver musicians. Uh, there were um, the CD that you played that was recorded in Denver. Uh, the piano player was Eric Gunnison on that, he, and the bass player was Mark Simon. They were Carmen McRae's last rhythm section. They played with her for about four years. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. just world class players. What? What talent? They say that if you're a smart musician, you'll always play with people who are better than you. And I have managed to put myself in that situation's off, situation almost every time. <laughs> oh, you're very modest, so, man. No, no, just just truthful. And and they've uh, and that's a, and that's really true. You know, the, if you play with good people, you're, they're gonna they're gonna bring you up. Uh, so I always enjoy putting myself in situations where you don't know what might happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We got really, time for a couple more songs. Oh, yeah, I'd love to do. I'll do a, a, do a song I wrote uh, a while ago. This song kind of evolved over years. The inspiration for this song, it's it's called Paradox. Um, and at one point it was called Manasi Manas. Uh, Manas is a Sanskrit word, and it means, in Sanskrit, it means heart and mind. They don't differentiate. They see them as one entity. And I, I always thought that was fascinating. So, you know, when people say, get out of your mind and, you know, let your heart, it's like, well, no, you need both. you got to have both. And I was playing in Jackson. I was at the Word Hotel. And every night that I would play, there was this cowboy sitting at the bar by himself at the Silver Dollar Bar. And he was the real deal. And I know because I, that's how I grew up on a ranch. And, and, uh, and I'm doing my little... I'll stop it at the DVD and stuff, and, I, and he'll shoot me a look, and I'm like, oh, this guy hates what I'm doing. He wants to hear Waylon and Willie, and, you know, and I really don't do any of that. This goes on for a couple couple of weeks, and finally he, he unfolds from his bar stool, and I see him walking towards me. I'm up on like a two-foot riser, and he we're pretty much looking at each other in the eye. <laughs> He's a big fella, and he, he kind of nods his head and puts his hands on his hip, and he looks at me, and he goes... Do you know any of those beautiful ballads that Johnny Hartman sang with John Coltrane? <laughs> and you could have knocked me over, you know. He, he wanted to hear the very 
thought of you makes my heart sing. <laughs> you were so, a big gruff cowboy. Yeah. I have a tender side. Oh, oh well, uh, and it, we got to be good friends, and and uh, but it, it made me realize I'm sitting there going, that that wasn't at all. You know, I manufactured that situation in my mind. You know, and that's where I needed maybe to be in my heart more than my head. Uh, find that balance. So that's what this song is about. That's a long story for a short song. Out of the stillness and the dark comes laughter and true light. Eyes reading faces usually miss the mark. You find the rarest of stones in the Strangest of places, sweet mystery of life. Haunting, elusive love bites. You can't see it coming, and it strikes from behind. Slip knots in the ties that bind when your heart double crosses your mind. Not a double cross, it's a paradox. Align your mind and your heart Sweet mystery of life Haunting elusive love bites You can't see it coming, it strikes from behind Slip nights in the ties that bind When your heart double crosses your mind In the intersect, intuition, intellect. Truth lies in the intersect, intuition, intellect. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Wow. Pleasure. Thank you. Man. Thank you for coming on the air oh. and playing, man. Jim, thanks for having me. That's, man, that's what a delight. Catch him next Wednesday, May the fourth, at Coldale. Make your reservations. You will not be disappointed in. You want to see him next month? I believe he's playing the 28th at Bino Salida. Man, we got good music all weekend. Man, get out see the River Arkansas tonight. Five o'clock Soulcraft. Wilma Ransom at the High Side. Yeah. Open mic. Yeah. We got the Salida Aspens local concert at the A Church. There's music all over town. Get out and enjoy this beautiful weather. Boy, two more minutes. What? I got a gab about something for two minutes. Do we have a fundraiser? Have y'all done anything to pay him? Oh, that's over, isn't it? We have a goal. It's never over. Oh, it's, it's never over. Always need new members, good members. Yeah. yeah. If you're listening, if you like this, go to khim.org and push the donate button. Yeah. And we have the lights on for another six months until our fall <laughs> fundraiser, right? Yep, exactly. Man. Well, it's been... Honestly, Justin, I can't say how happy I am to have you on this. You've been on my bucket list since I started this gig at the station. It's like, wow. It's like it's finally over. I was kind of nervous coming in here, and like I say, I don't... You were nervous. I'm the one with the guitar. (laughs) (laughs) You're the one with the guitar, and I don't have any notes. I just kind of wing it, so it's like you made it very easy for me. So The hour went by quick. Can we do another hour? Um, no, probably unfortunately, not. Unfortunately, no. no. <laughs> I, I hope I, I hope people will come out this Wednesday. And if, if you want to RSVP or if you want to register, which would be great, go to justinjazz.com, and you can contact me through there. Cool. The email that'd be fantastic. I'd like to thank all my listeners and my underwriters: High Country Bank, Fat Tees T-shirts and Gift Shop, Cafe Dawn, Mountain Mail, Monarch Mountain Community Outreach, Attorney at Law, Randy Canny, Oveja Negra. Highside Bar and Grill and Hilltop Broadband. Thank you so much for allowing me to do what I do. Guys, next week I have a blue...